if you're hot and you know what, clap your hands. Swing! Hey everyone, welcome back to What's Sewing On. Today I am finally doing my dream dress. I am so excited to do this. I've been mentioning it for a few videos now and I can finally say I can do it. Sir Charles Barkley is finally doing better so I can now put all of my attention and love into this dress. So you might be wondering what dress I'm talking about. Well, it's none other from the mind of our favorite, Joe Wright, 2005 Pride and Prejudice probably asking yourself, hmm, what dress is she going to do? A Mrs. Nope. Bennett, a Miss Bennett, mm -hmm. a Miss Bennett, nope. and a Miss Bennett. Wrong. No, I am doing none other than Sweet Baby Angel. Jane. Jane! Now I know a lot of people love or hate this movie. You can kick rocks, this movie is great, okay? It has romance, good acting, it has beautiful scenic shots, it has great costumes, it's just, a whole aesthetic on its own. And yes, I absolutely love the 1995 BBC version of this movie. Nobody's got time to watch that every single time you feel like getting your PNP fix. So this movie is just perfect for that. I also love Greer Garson's 1940s version. The wartime dresses, oh my God, they're just beautiful. They're massive gowns that is completely not historically accurate for the time period, but people, they were in the middle of a war. They needed to give them some eye candy and so they made these glorious costumes to one of everyone's favorite books. So yeah, I kind of went off there. So anyways, I really like the 2005 Pride and Prejudice. I'm sorry if you don't, don't actually kick rocks, but just don't hate on it either. Everyone's allowed to have their own opinion of what movie they like. And just because you like one doesn't mean you can't like the others. So the dress I'm doing is Jane. The moment Rosamund Pike walked onto screen in that first outfit, my jaw dropped, popcorn fell out of my mouth, drink everywhere. I may not have believed in love at first sight before, but when I saw that dress, it's real. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of pictures on Pinterest of this dress, which is slightly annoying, but just gives me a reason to watch the movie again, you know for research. I know that this pattern that I did buy, it's not exactly like it, so I think I'm going to have to make some modifications, which I, which I think I'll be able to do, but oh, we'll see. So without further ado, let's get opening. So it finally came in the mail and I have been dying to open this up. Look at how many postage stamps there are. stamps. So here it is. Oh, yeah. oh my goodness. Can we take a minute to appreciate how perfectly folded these pattern pieces are? Coming from someone who always thrifts their pattern and half the time it's missing pieces, this is magical. So thank you, American Duchess, and thank you for putting your date on your pattern. I'm gonna take a minute and read through this, then I'll show you the fabric and then get cut. on the progress of the first dress. I had said at the start that there were some modifications I wanted to do, which I then completely forgot to do them. That's shocking. If you look at Rosamund Pike's dress, her neckline is actually a V-neck kind of ruched neckline, whereas this pattern has the classic chemise rounded neckline that's tied with a ribbon. 
So I had initially thought whenever I was cutting out the pattern that I would just extend this out and then cut it down and that way I can just gather it all together and keep this width. That would have been the easy way to do it. So I cut the pattern piece the way it was laid out. And if you notice when I was cutting, I actually had to take quite a bit of width out of all of the skirt pieces, especially the side panels. But again, if you look at Roseman Pike's dress, she doesn't have as full of a skirt as this one. I also didn't put in the train, so it's really not that big of a deal. That means I didn't have fabric to make that gathered neckline. So I was looking through my scrap pieces and I actually realized I had cut off the very top of the sheet. Um, so it's double folded and then stitched. It's basically on every single sheet. Um, so once I cut off all that stitching and opened it up, I had quite a bit of fabric. So I cut four pieces out of that and I stitched two together. I'll show you on this because it might be easier to see. So basically what I did then with the panel that I had just made, I stitched it all along here and then out front. The outside panel piece, I made a hem. Again, put it to the outside and stitched it all across the bottom. So basically it looks like this. This is the rolled hem. You can see one stitch panel here and you can see one stitch line panel there. And then I just basted the top. I gathered it so it equals the same width and it sewed all together. I wanted to stick with a gathered waist so I just made a channel and I'm able to gather the waist. I also sewed together some of the back pieces. I still have to put this onto the back bodice. I have to finish attaching the rest of the skirt and then set in the sleeves and that will be it for dress number one. <laughs> My bobbin thread ran out and I've been sewing with air for half of the skirt. Day two. I just wanted to start this video off actually showing what the modifications are going to be. That way I don't forget and they're fresh in my mind. So what I learned from the first dress is there is absolutely way too much freaking fabric here. It's so full. Too full. So if I have enough time I'm thinking I might take apart the dress and honestly cut out the two side panels. For the back dress, I'm not even going to be using the side panels. Obviously you don't have a front panel, so I'm just going to be using the back. I think I'm going to be adding in an extra maybe 12 inches just because there are some pleats in the dress and I want to make sure that I'm able to do those. I don't want the pleats to be too much, but I want them at least to be there. And for the Jane Bennett dress, she actually has two kind of pleats that go all the way down the front and then she has three in the back. I also, even though I think this is what the back of her dress does look like, I think I just wanna make it almost like a jacket rather than have these uh, three extra panel pieces that attach to the skirt. I think I just want it one big piece. I don't know if that's gonna change the whole look of the dress or if it's actually gonna work out, but for some reason, that's what I wanna do. So I'm going to try it. And the way I'm going to do it is basically, this is the front bodice piece. I'll be taking some of the shoulder off. I find it comes out way too far on my shoulder. And then basically instead of cutting down this line, I'm going to be putting from here over onto the fold of the fabric. And then I'll make a little cut that's a bit of a dip. And then I'm just going to follow along the rest of this pattern and cut two of those on the fold. So it's just one piece that opens up. It's basically exactly like the first dress, so I don't really see me running into many problems. I just hope that my modifications work out. Whoa!
done with the Jane Bennett look. I think it turned out really nice. I know that there's a lot of mistakes and there's a lot of things I need to work on. Sleeves especially, tailoring sleeves, making sure that they don't look like this. Pretty sure her dress on the movie was strapless because as you can see, it looks like I have the biggest muscles in the world. And her coat was also made with thicker fabric, so it's not as wrinkly as this one. But you know what? For two bed sheets, I think it turned out pretty well. Kind of wishing I would have brought this panel over to the very edge because I don't like this overlap. But that's something I can work on for next time. I'm definitely going to make this dress again. I'm kind of happy that I did make them out of sheets to begin with because it's like I technically made a mock-up that I will be wearing, but it's still a mock-up. So now I know what to do. Like, don't use so much fabric in the skirt. I took out quite a large panel out of this, the underdress. There was just way too much and I only used one and a half panels for the top. I think it turned out more like Rosamund Pike's dress than what it looked like before. So I think it looks really cute. Obviously it's not something I'm gonna be wearing all the time. I'm actually really warm right now, so. But all in all, I am really happy with the way it turned out. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and hopefully you subscribe. I'll be making more videos like this every Monday and I'll be doing craft videos every other Friday. I will see you guys in my next video. Love the group. I also love the Greer Garston. <laughs> oh my God. Really great job. So excited. It me. <laughs> Mrs. Bingley, you bitch. <laughs>